We uh, will next listen to uh, MEP uh, Tonina Pichula. Um, now um, they are establishing the connection right now. I will already introduce him uh, and then uh, we can move forward. Now, because um, they say success has many fathers uh, and the success of the clean uh, energy for EU Ireland uh, initiative is definitely uh, a success that we can uh, tribute to uh, the, if there's one political father, uh, we think it would be Tonina, Tonino uh, Pichula. And uh, he has uh, in, in, in time started uh, the um, Clean Energy for EU Ireland uh, initiative. And uh, he's a third term MEP from the island of Lozinch. And my God, how I would like to sit down with him uh, in Lozinch, in the Rovenska Bay, at uh, on the terrace of the uh, Tartuferia, uh, looking over the boats coming in, uh, instead of being glued all day to our screen. But that's unfortunately the reality uh, of COVID here. And uh, so it means we're stuck uh, here in Brussels uh, to our screen. Um, but I can assure you already the next uh, uh, forum will definitely be on an island uh, somewhere and we will all meet in life. Now, anyway, Mr. Pichula knows how to pull strings in Brussels. Um, he is president of the Intergroup for Seas, Rivers, Islands and Coastal Areas. And uh, he has not missed a single uh, clean energy for EU island forum. Uh, and we're now at the sixth edition, so which makes him obviously our um, honorary guest. So um, I hear that uh, Mr. Pichula is not there yet. Um, we are waiting for him uh, to come on board. Um, so perhaps um, we can continue in the program uh, with uh, some of the, um, so the we're, we're part. With the video. With the video, okay. We uh, will move directly to the, um, uh, messages from the islands. You'll see these are very inspiring uh, testimonials uh, from the islands and we thought it was very important for uh, to rapidly and, and uh, early in the program already have the messages from the islands to you because this is not about us, this is not about uh, Brussels, this is about what's happening on the islands, the people that are pioneering, the people that are putting uh, uh, real uh, flesh to the clean energy transition. And uh, so I, uh, we will now continue with the broadcast of uh, these, uh, the videos, testimonials from the islands. And then we hope in the meantime that uh, we can get uh, Mr. Pichula on board. So uh, without further ado, if we're ready, um, we go to uh, the video. Cuando el aire, el sol, el agua y la tierra se encuentran en equilibrio, nace la vida. Es vital que este equilibrio sea dinámico para mantener las condiciones favorables que hacen posible la vida en el planeta. En la isla de La Palma nace un movimiento orgánico formado por personas y organizaciones que impulsan un nuevo modelo energético más eficiente y 100% renovable. No tenemos todas las respuestas, pero sí la certeza de que la inteligencia colectiva, métodos eficaces de organización y una metodología científica nos van a llevar a las soluciones que necesitamos.
Pantelleria è una delle tre isole italiane pioniere per la transizione energetica. Nel corso degli ultimi anni abbiamo redatto con un processo partecipato la nostra agenda, nella quale abbiamo indicato la strada da seguire per raggiungere l'autosufficienza energetica entro il 2050. L'impegno del Comune in questo processo è rilevante. Abbiamo ottenuto diversi finanziamenti per efficientare gli edifici pubblici e per l'installazione di impianti fotovoltaici. Complessivamente nei prossimi mesi avremo installato 350 kW di impianti sulle superfici di proprietà comunali. Ma non vogliamo fermarci qui, stiamo pensando al recupero di altre superfici, quale alcune ex discariche, in cui poter installare altri 2 MW di impianti fotovoltaici ed eolici. Questo è solo l'inizio del nostro percorso che contiamo di portare a termine il prima possibile. Hi, good morning. For two years, 130 persons on my home island, Chirkar, have been engaged in developing a sustainability plan. Let me tell you about it. It will only take a few minutes. First, we try to understand the term sustainability. We engaged students, researchers, consultants to examine and describe our present situation We talked and talked and met. We used social media and drank coffee together. We discussed in our committees and board. Yes, we are a municipality, although we are only 250 residents. Halfway in the process, we realized that habitability is the crucial thing. If people born and raised here do not want to stay, we are not habitable. To us being habitable is the most important and tangible expression of sustainability. We developed a habitability index with 40 indicators divided into seven areas. We measured ourselves, our present situation on a four-point scale. One is weak, energy. Being a remote island we spend very much non-renewable energy traveling to and from the mainland. With a clear understanding of the present, we describe the future we want, making a vision of the island in 10 years with an outlook towards 2050. Surprisingly enough, it was not so hard to do as we anticipated. We made an itinerary, aware of our limited means and the unpredictable nature of the future, but also with a strong belief in ourselves and our possibilities. What makes SAMHSA a pioneer in energy transition and social innovation? So the special about SAMHSA is probably that we as a community make, made a 100% transition from oil to renewable energy. 20 years ago, that was quite unusual that you made such a successful transformation. So the fast transition happens when you connect locality, activity and mentality. So this is, in other words, that we actually make people believe it's their own idea. When we saw the first project successfully be realized, then people got more confidence and trust and said, all right, it's not so difficult, we can do this. It's about what we did was that we introduced very well-functioning windmills, established enough wind power to be self-supplied with, with electricity from wind power. Heating is a combination of solar and biomass heat pumps in remote houses where you don't uh, have access to collective underground heating systems. And the last one is uh, transportation, which has been a big issue because we didn't 20 years ago have electric cars. We have them more today. So we put up uh, power enough on offshore capacity to feed into batteries and electric cars and ferries. The island of Aigiosef Stratios is the smallest island of the North Aegean region. In the recent years, the municipality of Aigiosef Stratios has started to implement some eco-friendly projects. Due to the climate change, we try to implement projects that support sustainable development. We have created some infrastructures of biological treatment. 
waste transshipment station and we are preparing to submit a proposal for the creation of green corners. Our biggest project is the Green Island Aistratis. It is a project that aims at the usage of renewable energy sources. With regard to this project, we installed on the island one windmill, one electricity plant and one hybrid station of electricity. Εδώ το νησί είχε μια ισορροπία που ήταν θαυμαστή. Αναφέρεται και ιστορικά. Είχε μια πανιά και μια χλωρίδα που ήταν αξιοζήτευτη. Και που είναι μια ομορφιά. Πραγματικά όλα μαζί δίνουν μια εικόνα που νομίζω ότι είναι ελκυστική για τον καθένα. Κάνουμε όλε τι προσπάθειε θέλοντα να συγκεράσουμε και εμπειρίε, τι γνώμε των παλιών, αλλά και επιστημονικέ απόψει, ώστε να μπορέσουμε να αφήσουμε αυτή τη φύση να κάνει το κέφι τη. Πραγματικά, όταν η φύση κάνει το κέφι τη, τότε γίνονται θαύματα. Το έργο Τίλο λοιπόν, ξεκινάει από το 2010, όταν ο τότε Δήμαρχο Τάσο Αλιφέρη, σε συνεργασία με το ΤΕΗ Πειραιά, όπου ήμουν φοιτητή κι εγώ, αποφάσισαν να κάνουν μια προσπάθεια ώστε να εντάξουν τι ανανεώσιμε πηγέ ενέργεια στο νησί. Και στο κοπό του και ο στόχο του είναι να γίνουμε το πρώτο ενεργειακά αυτόνομο νησί στη Μεσόγειο. Well, this was a great video and this is powerful, you know, some people write books about uh, why, you know, starting with why, telling the why of what you're doing. Well, I think when we see this video, my impression is this is why, you know, this is genuine energy transition. This is uh, true community work and these are real um, net zero pioneers on the islands. and. I particularly loved the uh, habitability uh, concept that was put forward by Christian uh, of the uh, island of uh, Chukar. Um, I think this is very inspiring and it's good to have had uh, right away these messages from the islands because uh, indeed it's all about that. Now, I have already introduced Mr. Pichula uh, as the political father of the uh, Clean Energy for EU initiative. Uh, <laughs> I've also uh, introduced him uh, uh, as coming from uh, the island of Lozinj, uh, where I had uh, wanted to sit down with him at the Rovenska Bay uh, at the Tartuferia. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but unfortunately, we're stuck to our screen, but it's working now. That's already the good news. Uh, yeah. Working, we have him online. Uh, we can listen to him. So without further ado, I would say, uh, Mr. Pichula, uh, the floor is yours. Very happy to have you uh, uh, again at the uh, Clean Energy uh, for Ireland Forum. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Of course, thank you for uh, enlisted me in among the founding fathers of the whole idea, of course. And I gladly share that credits for uh, so many friends uh, from the European Parliament, my colleagues from a different corner of the European Union. And I can say that there's a lot of reason to be in a way proud of what we achieved uh, during the couple of years. But anyway, let me start uh, with express my really great honor to be here today to greet you this morning and the opening of Clean Energy for EU Island Forum. First one, since the Island Secretariat started its second phase of work. Regrettably, due to the pandemic restraints, uh, we are not able to travel and once again meet in person, but I'm sure there will be more opportunity, opportunities in the future of our work. Speaking here today was a good opportunity to at least take a trip down the memory lane from the launch of the initiative three years ago to forums in Lanzarote, Stockholm, Split, and the last one in October that was in digital format too. Today's event comes as a great pit stop where we can reflect on what has been done, how much was achieved, and what are the next steps to take. I come before you in a double capacity as a member of European Parliament and together with my colleague Alfred Sand, author, co-author of the preparatory action plans that provided funding for both stages of secretariat work. Our journey began 
Five years ago, when we proposed 2 million euros for preparatory action plan with objective to make islands front runners on clean energy transition and showcase solutions to this end at the European level. The ultimate aim was to help islands to move to the production of electricity for, from local clean energy sources and to become autonomous to the greatest possible extent in energy supply. I believe we moved in that direction in the meantime. My other hat is being the president of seas, rivers, islands and coastal areas, Sirica. Sirica Intergroup that gathers 104 members of the parliament from 23 member states and six political groups. I think it's important as well. And the objective of uh, Intergroup is to coordinate our action and support the development of a strong maritime and island dimension within the main initiatives proposed by the European Commission. I'm happy to say that in the meantime, in this mandate, we have cross-party broad coalition of members following island thematic in different areas and more importantly, working together. Last example of this is European Parliament mandate for just transition fund, where we ask for share of one percentage of the total amount of to be allocated for islands. In the compromise proposal later on, agreed with the Council, important part of Trinity, European Union institutions, we needed to settle down for special budget lines for islands and outermost regions within the national plans. However, it's encouraging to see that special focus on island does project concrete results within the Parliament. Just two days ago, Parliament voted on and confirmed new Just Transition Fund. The GTF worth 17.5 billion euro is one of the European Union's key tools to support regions in their transition towards climate neutrality by 2050. It is also the first key element of European Green Deal. It aims to provide support to the people and the regions in the transition to a climate neutral Europe, addressing social and economic consequences that the process will bring. This week, Parliament also adopted a report on European strategy for hydrogen that can have an important role towards climate neutrality. The transition towards a clean energy system needs to ensure security of supply and affordability of energy. Therefore, European Union needs to develop a sustainable hydrogen economy that aims at making clean hydrogen competitive as soon as possible. We also need to develop an integrated energy system to promote renewable energy and to achieve climate neutrality. Speaking more generally, European Green Deal is the main document and our reference when deciding on many other legislative proposals. One constant reference in all of our position is alignment with our Green Deal. This is why it's particularly important to have the reference to the Clean Energy for EU Island initiative as part of the Green Deal communication, developing a long-term framework and accelerate the clean energy transition on the all EU islands is now part of, perhaps, most important file in this mandate and further along. Shortly speaking, European Union is demonstrating a high level of ambition and now it's time to match ambition with expectations. Parliament will have its saying in other inter-institutional negotiations too. Climate law was one of the focal points. We aim to transform political promises that the EU will become climate neutral by mid of century into binding obligations. We want to give European citizens and businesses the legal certainty and predictability that need to plan for transformation. We follow closely communication uh, and the commission presentation of the renovation wave strategy as energy efficiency of the buildings, and it's a key precondition to achieve our climate goals. As mentioned, 40% of our energy consumption is in the buildings that are very rarely energy efficient. 
Interesting part of it for islands could be developing neighborhood-based approaches for local communities to integrate renewable and digital solutions and create zero energy districts. Given the abundance of natural resources for energy production on the islands, consumers could become prosumers, selling energy to the grid. I would also like to shortly reflect upon the European offshore renewable energy strategy. That can be both a short and long-term solution to Europe's current challenges. Investment in offshore renewables can spark a truly green recovery and boost job creation in European communities suffering from economic downturn. In the long run, deploying additional offshore capacity is necessary to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. To achieve these objectives and drive growth in all European coastal regions, we must be sufficiently ambitious on all offshore renewables, not only wind. We have to ensure that it profits to all sea basins and benefits to a wide range of coastal regions in Europe, in particular islands and outermost regions, in order to reduce their dependency from fossil energy. It would be incomplete to discuss EU strategies and our work without mentioning cohesion funds and recovery and re resilience fund. The new MFF has set itself for two central objectives green new deal and cohesion and the two main budgetary instruments to support these objectives are cohesion funds and rrf this manual budget marks a turning point and cohesion has become the first eu budget item ahead of agriculture this is a turning point for cohesion in a second respect as recovery and resilience facility has also been integrated into cohesion budget heading. These two tools under the new multi-annual financial framework will therefore have to work together and more than 350 billion euros can be invested everywhere in Europe as of July. The main message of my report on cohesion policy and challenges of climate change was that the climate change is not only a matter of environment, it's also a matter of economic and social change. Cohesion policy is an instrument having this purpose as its foundation. But the economic, social and territorial disparities may also be exacerbated by climate change and its long-term consequences. Transition towards climate neutrality can only be reached in a socially fair and just pathway forwards, leaving no one behind. Economic social and territorial cohesion means in this regard to put a special focus on these three elements. On economic cohesion with sustainable growth and green jobs, respecting the needs on the different sectors. On a social cohesion with a just transition, social fairness and understanding for energy poverty and special needs. And on a territorial cohesion with understanding of the different needs of EU regions, especially insular regions. While fighting for the island's agenda, we often witnessed similar response. It's impossible to create a special category for them or to tailor a policy that can fit all their needs. They are so diverse, etc. I think that diversity of islands is one of the, their best assets and make them the perfect showcase to implement vital policies such as this one on energy transition is. Successful initiative on clean energy for EU islands and running secretariat are the very good example on how European Union islands can be and are at the forefront of energy transition and decarbonization of economies. This is why we need two crucial things. First, adequate funding of all scale projects. And second, adequate investments into research and innovation that will create replicable solutions and ease the transition for everyone. From the institutional side, what we need is adjustment of legislative proposals to reflect the specialities of the island and legally binding framework that can be relied upon the funding purposes. As the second stage of the Secretariat just began, I believe it is just to let from them present their work and you, dear islanders, as direct beneficiaries to discuss. 
evaluate it and contribute to it. I can only commend their work for so far an ambitious agenda they presented for the upcoming two years. I wish to thank to everyone who gave their contribution to the work of the previous Secretariat, as many of them continue their work in this phase too. I'm happy to see so many of the islands included in your work on different levels and support you continue providing for the clean energy transition path. When or what I find even more important is the island's community you built and links you established with the islanders and among them. I do believe one of the main tasks of the new Secretariat should be exactly that, expanding that network and reach out to many more. But maybe the most important element should be assisting islands in finding bankable projects to put all of the strategies in practice. Our main goal when proposing this project was to provide technical assistance to islands to attract the funding more successfully. As mentioned earlier, both of the phases have limited mandate and we continue our fight for the structural change. We need a permanent structure for energy transition of islands and then overall EU strategy for islands. I'm particularly proud that one of the concrete outcomes of the Croatian Presidency's Memorandum of Understanding by 14 member states on June 15 as a first step towards a permanent structure. I wish to conclude by saying that crisis is making us all even more aware of the vulnerabilities in our societies and economies. I believe this challenge must be turned into opportunity, opportunity for sustainable development of islands based on just and green transition. Islands already show that in energy transition, they can lead the way and be the showcase for the rest of the Europe. I'm convinced this can be applied in other aspects of their development too. I'm looking forward to continue our work with islanders for islands. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Pichula, and uh, we're so happy it uh, finally worked out to have you on screen uh, and also on sound, because the statement you gave uh, was very rich, um, not only uh, in history uh, of the Clean Energy for EO Island Secretariat, but also uh, in the, the path to the future. And I think we sometimes underestimate how much effort and how much uh, dedication it asks to secure in the European Parliament uh, a specific budget line for the Secretariat to keep uh, the focus on uh, the islands and and, uh, and the energy transition there. And, and uh, you've been uh, a, a sort of continuous and permanent uh, advocate of that, and, and we must really thank you for that. Now, in what you said, there were particular um, items that struck me. Obviously, hydrogen, uh, everyone's talking about it. It's it's the big thing at the moment. And uh, we will definitely uh, later in the forum, but also in a dedicated uh, webinar, uh, discuss you know hydrogen applications on the islands because it is uh, an important issue and it's also um, an, a challenging issue, uh, definitely for islands uh, and, and how they can use it. So that's, that's one. Secondly, uh, what I um, very much liked was the link between the energy transition and the cohesion policies uh, and also the cohesion funding. And, and later in, in the program, we will also uh, dwell on that and, and have some more explication from uh, the working group of the memorandum of split uh, on funding that we had on that and where cohesion policy was one of the big instruments uh, for this. And this integration of different funding streams in a, a sort of uh, comprehensive uh, Green Deal energy transition, just transition strategy is indeed uh, very important. And, and that's the last uh, point. I, I think it's also um, very important. Uh, it's the just transition. I mean, uh, and linked to energy poverty. It's, it's very important. We can talk about coal, we can talk about petrol, but in the end, we must be able to show that the alternatives are there and that they can be uh, cheaper even uh, than the current uh, energy solutions. And, and that's, you know, that requires a, a just transition that requires funding. And there, uh, I think uh, the European Parliament uh, very recently uh, has uh, voted uh, the uh, 21 billion for just transition. Uh, and, and we would very much love to see uh, also some of this funding uh, getting uh, to the islands uh, because they also are in need uh, of just transition. 
Um, thank you very much, Mr. Petula. Um, I don't know whether on the just transition you would, um, I mean, if I can ask one, just one question with your experience and, and you have a, a wealth of experience and a very long-term experience. So like just transition on the island, you know, uh, how do we make the link between the European funding and what's happening on the islands? Could you just one minute dwell on that as a sort of uh, closed yeah. statement? Thank you. Thank you for uh, for your words, of course, uh, trying to comprise what I have said. Uh, in short, uh, like, almost like uh, an, I'm using a Twitter, I think that um, uh, green transition uh, will be successful it, it, if it will be a just transition and vice versa. Just transitional fund must, in a way, uh, take into account all green elements because that's the basic idea, that's the core of the, of the whole idea. And uh, what is very important, uh, uh, I would like to underline, uh, just transitional fund can be uh, utilized, can, uh, we, can, we, could, we can't uh, target money from it to the islands if we will not create, first of all, institu institutional uh, uh, base. Uh, so it's very important to give awareness uh, on a problem and, uh, and hydrogen as the next big thing in producing uh, 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 affordable energy. But if you could not secure uh, changes in the structure in the commission, of course, in, and, and, uh, and uh, address importance of the council in this sense, we will stay half away. So it's a very good news that cohesion now, in a way, is almost equal as a, a, a green deal, because we now uh, are able to put additional political pressure on a commission and the council to take into account a uh, new dimension of the islands uh, which institutions uh, recognize and this is a clean transition. Mm -hmm. uh, believe me, four years ago, when we step in that territory, we were in a, what to say, no man's land, in a way. It's a completely unknown, uncharted territory. Now we start to chart that territory and luckily, uh, uh, energy dependence in the European Union, diversification of energy sources, in a way, overlap with the in a way, uh, uh, new interest for uh, for islands. So we are now on the track, and I believe just transition fund must take into the, into the account not only uh, coal depending areas of European Union, but we need to take into the account also uh, other fossil fuel uh, dependencies on the island. But of course, much rest on the will of the national states. You know, envelopes will be written in the capitals. So we, we are trying in the parliament to put pressure on the national governments to follow our lead. And I believe that the uh, 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 forums like Clean Energy for European Union Islands will and be able to give its fair share for the uh, favorable outcomes. Thank you very much uh, for that, Mr. Pechula. And, and I trust your perseverance on this. So uh, we are looking uh, forward to uh, the future of the uh, Just Transition Funding. And we would also already like to book you for the next forum, um, which uh, we can already promise will be live, will be on an island, will make it happen. Uh, the destination so far is unknown, uh, but uh, we will get there. Thank you very much, Mr. Pechula.